Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ronaldo Moore with PPG. And if you are a new viewer, welcome aboard. On my returning viewers, as always, welcome back. <laughs> what you're looking at in the background is framing. Framed up house right before drywall. I've had a lot of requests for this type video, so here it comes. I will be identifying all of the major framing components in a house. Um, studs, joists, rafters, beams. I'll identify them. I'll briefly explain what they're used for, um, different sizes. Um, so, yeah. So, we guys learned something, and I will see you again on the next one. All right, let's kick this off by talking about a wooden stud. The stud, this is pretty much the backbone, skeleton of a interior wall, exterior wall, stud. They come in different sizes, two by four, two by six, two by eight. Two by four and two by six is, are the most common sizes. They are typically nailed to the double top plate and to the single bottom plate. Okay, what you are looking at is a window on a exterior wall. Let's briefly go over some of the framing members around a window. First of all, you have your header above. It's catching a lot of that load, low bearing wall. The framing members to the left and right of that window. First of all, you have your jack stud. That's your jack stud. That's your king stud. That jack stud is right up under the LVLs. It goes all the way down to the floor. The king stud goes from ceiling down to the floor. Jack stud, king stud, header. This is a concealed chase. Typically used for HVAC, duct, sometimes plumbing. But you definitely have to seal the top of a concealed chase. Okay, these are engineered roof trusts. They are manufactured in a factory designed by an engineer. They are delivered out to the job site and hoisted up by a crane. All right, these are called floor trust. They are manufactured in a factory they engineered, manufactured in a factory, and delivered here on site. Okay, what you're looking at is a door header. That's a window header. All doors and windows on the exterior wall must have headers above to carry the load of an exterior wall. That is called a double top plate. Typically find those on exterior walls that's a single bottom plate or seal plate. Is OSB. Uh, they all come in different thicknesses, but you typically use it for subflooring, uh, exterior sheathing, for roof sheathing, um, and that is plywood. It also comes in different thicknesses. It's typically used for exterior sheathing, flooring, uh, roof, roof sheathing. Um, I think plywood is probably a little more, costs a little more than OSB. All right, let's talk about some of the key components as it relates to the roof framing. These pieces, these components are critical. This is the, the skeleton of the roof. You got that ridge beam, but that's one that's going horizontal. It's typically a two by eight, two by 10, could be a two by 12. You got your rafters. These are the rafters. Going down to the top plate, up to the ridge beam. They're typically two by six, can be two by eights. Uh, typically every 16 inches, you can make them every 24 inches. That piece that's attaching to rafters is called a collar tie. Uh, that power, that vertical piece, I'm sorry. That's going down. That's typically that's a hurling brace. Uh, it attaches to the ridge beam. It 
goes down to a low bearing wall or LVL. But this is pretty much the, the skeleton of, of the roof framing. Um, critical pieces. And those are called ceiling joists. They're typically about 16 inches on center or maybe 24 inches on center. And these are called floor joists. They range in different sizes, two by eights, two by tens, maybe two by twelves. They are typically 16 inches on center. Some I've even seen 24 inches on center. And that is a bokeh plate. It's used to protect the plumbing vertically. Um, they should extend up a minimum two inches from the bottom plate. What you're looking at is a nail guard. Typically they are used to protect any either wiring or piping going through studs, going horizontally through a stud. And I have quite a few videos about this one. Point load, transferring your point loads. What you're looking at are four floor trust. Um, that load is being transferred with look, looks like five studs. So he's transferring his load down to the foundation. Okay, what you are looking at is fire rated plywood. That's the pink salmon colored material and just regular OSB as the tan colored material. Now, if that fire rated plywood is not labeled, typically it'll be labeled fire rated but if it's not, this is a good way to identify if you are dealing with fire rated plywood, just that pink salmon color. Normally it's, it's identified, it's labeled, but if you don't see any labeling on that plywood, pink salmon color is a good indication that it is fire rated. And this is a doorway on a interior wall, non low bearing wall. You do not need a header above a doorway or a door for a non low bearing wall. And this is called a seal plate or a bottom plate. And they come in different sizes as well two by four, two by sixes, or even two by eights.